Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up. We're in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Tomorrow is the Manny Pacquiao Brandon Rios fight. Big event. Huge. Right? Manny Pacquiao is coming off of a devastating knockout loss. He's also in his mid 30s now. He has been out of the ring for a while, but there is a question. Since he wasn't himself in the fight before the last fight, forget the controversy. In the Timothy Bradley fight, right? I believe even those who believe Pacquiao won the fight would have to concede that Manny Pacquiao was lacking a certain amount of explosiveness that is emblematic of his style. In other words, Manny Pacquiao against Timothy Bradley seemed subdued. He didn't seem like Manny Pacquiao. Right Now, whatever you think of that decision, just understand in that last Marquez fight, his very next fight, before the knockout, Manny Pacquiao, uncharacteristically, this is not something Manny Pacquiao does. This is not something Pacquiao had done at any time during the prior Marquez fights. Manny Pacquiao hit the canvas, right? This is before the knockout. Manny Pacquiao is actually knocked down. Now, as I like to say here online, there's only one truly unbeaten champion in the annals of boxing, and that's Father Time, right? I'll tell you how Father Time catches up with you. It starts to look like you're just not on your game. It's almost imperceptible at first, right? It looks like you're a little asleep. The reflexes aren't quite there, right? It looks like you're having an off night. Then suddenly the people around you start to notice that you're having a lot of off nights. That the highlights of you as a young man exceed what you're doing now. Then, of course, fighters who you used to blow over as a young man, who in your prime you could take for granted and actually deliver against, start being competitive with you. Dare I say, they start beating you at times. Now, as a general rule, I try to stay away from fighters coming off of devastating knockout losses. What do I mean by devastating knockout loss? Think Roy Jones against Dennis Lebedev. Think Manny Pacquiao against Marquez, where the guy's not dazed on the canvas. He's not looking around, wondering where he is. No, he's not even conscious enough to do that. He's out, right? It's not that he's looking around and trying to process where he is. It's that he's asleep, right? It's so bad that when Manny Pacquiao comes to, people like his wife are shaken up. In other words, there's a moment of doubt there. Take a look at Roy Jones's corner. When he comes to against Dennis Lebedev, Jones runs with a tight crew. Those guys have been with him for a long time. Those guys know Roy Jones. Just look at the faces of the guys around him. Look at the faces of the guys around Manny Pacquiao when he comes to. Folks, there's concern. This is Manny Pacquiao's very next fight. 
right? Now let me say this. If it's prime Pacquiao, if Manny Pacquiao is still Manny Pacquiao, let me make the case right now on why he should get a stoppage in the fight. Right? You're looking at terrible casino odds, but you notice Manny Pacquiao by stoppage is a 1 to 2. You're thinking, whoa, whoa, wait a moment. You know, it's Manny, a guy who's actually held the 154 title. And he's fighting a guy who really doesn't know his way around the ring at 147. Right? This is Manny with something to prove. Let's face it. People are whispering right now, right? That third Marquez fight wasn't convincing to the crowd that was there, right? There are many people who saw the end of that third Marquez fight and they thought, oh, great, Marquez has finally done enough to officially win one of these fights. Then they announced Manny Pacquiao won the fight. It was so controversial, they had to do it again. The Timothy Bradley fight, whatever you think about the fight. As you watch those last few rounds, you remember when Manny Pacquiao used to be the Energizer Bunny? You remember when Manny Pacquiao was there, still going strong, still able to stop guys like Miguel Cotto in the 12th round? And here was Manny Pacquiao against a guy with two sprained ankles. I'm serious about that. Two sprained ankles. And the guy was more active than Manny Pacquiao in those last few rounds of the Timothy Bradley fight. You were watching that fight and you thought, okay, Bradley's going the distance against Pacquiao. That's interesting. Then you thought to yourself, you know what? Whoa, whoa. Bradley's actually looking good against Pacquiao. Then we get to the next one man, well, Marquez fight. Pacquiao had his moments in the fight. But as you're watching that fight, you had to think to yourself, whoa, wait a moment, haven't these guys fought enough for Manny Pacquiao not to be suckered into standing right in front of Marquez? I mean, weren't you wondering where was Manny Pacquiao's foot speed? I mean, isn't the Manny Pacquiao we grew up with the guy who moved around the ring? You know what, if I'm fighting Juan Manuel Marquez, I don't want to actually be at the chess table trying to play chess with the grandmaster. I want to be around the ring, right? I want to force the older fighter to actually move a little bit, especially when I have some of the best legs in boxing. But there's Manny Pacquiao. Gets dropped, gets up, then gets stopped. Right? Even the knockout's a bit curious. What's Manny doing diving at Juan Manuel Marquez? Right, you see Marquez over by the side of the ropes, right? Marquez isn't even pursuing Manny Pacquiao. He's over by the side of the ropes, setting traps. Manny Pacquiao walks right into the trap. But here's what I want you to consider. It's spacing in the ring. Let me digress just a second to illustrate the point. I like heavyweight boxing. One of the things I like the most about heavyweight boxing is these guys aren't quite as coordinated as the smaller fighters, right? Everything's a little bit exaggerated, right? The guys are a bit clunkier. So of course, it's interesting because you have some guys in the heavyweight division right now at the elite levels who can literally hit you from long distance and you actually notice it. In other words, Vladimir Klitschko can literally be several feet away from you. He can take a step forward, come with an overhand right, typically after a left jab, and he can hit you from seemingly halfway across the ring. Another guy, David Hay. These are guys who are way outside. David Hay, Audley Harrison, right? David Hay looks like he's in the middle of the ring, Suddenly, he takes a step forward. Audley Harrison's put out of his misery on that night, right? Manny Pacquiao's like that. I know he's fast. I know he's quick. Understand, prime Pacquiao doesn't have to be close to you 
to take you out. He can throw that left hand. It's a straight left. He's a southpaw from downtown. He's a three-point shooter. He can hurt you without getting close to the basket. Now, Brandon Rios is different. Brandon Rios needs to be up on you. While Manny Pacquiao can operate from the three-point line, right? And he's quick with it. In other words, you know those guys who are a quick shooter, right? The guy can just touch the ball, let it go. Bingo. Right, quick release. Stephen Curry out here with the Golden State Warriors, right? Deadly accuracy, but yet doesn't need a lot of time to get the shot off, right? From distance. Brandon Rios is different. He's a layup guy. He needs to be up on you. Look at him against Murray. Look at him against Antilia, right? Look at him against Richard Abril. Interesting fight. Abril's trying to play a distance game. Right? Even as Abril is dominating that fight, don't believe the scorecards, right? Believe your eyes. Even as he is dominating that fight, right? Even as Abril is dominating, Brandon Rios is continually trying to get inside because he has to to be effective. Here's the problem guys who need to get up close to do damage typically have above average foot speed. Think Marvin Hagler, right? Nice crisp short punches, but they have to get close to you. They have to shorten the distance so they can make it a layup drill, right? Brandon Rios doesn't have the foot speed that Manny Pacquiao has. A lot of Pacquiao's brilliance is below the waist. Manny Pacquiao moves around the ring, at least prime Pacquiao, right? Moves around the ring and then is able to sharpshoot you from distance. It's only after he softens you up from distance that he then steps inside and flashes blinding hand speed, right? Manny Pacquiao on the scorecard should win the vast majority of the rounds. In other words, while Brandon Rios is stepping forward trying to find Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao should be riddling him with sniper shots from the outside, right? Manny Pacquiao is a sniper, just like Vladimir Klitschko and David Hay. He's that guy who literally looks too far away from you and then can take a step forward and drop the hammer, right? Um, another guy with this kind of game is Saul Alvarez when he's on his game, right? These are guys who from a few feet away can hit you, can actually drop you, right? Brandon Rios doesn't have that. So as you watch this fight, just watch the distance between the fighters. If it's wide, Manny Pacquiao should be dominating. I personally see no way that Brandon Rios can win a decision, right? The bet I'm recommending, and it's low margin, you're not going to make that much money at all on the play. But the bet I like is Pacquiao to win hedged with Rios by KO. But just understand, I'm sprinkling some on Manny Pacquiao by KO. Because if Manny Pacquiao is still Manny Pacquiao, if he's still that guy, he should get the KO. I know Rios has never been stopped. Understand a big secret to Manny Pacquiao is that he is a very hard puncher. Right? In other words, I believe Pacquiao's like Sergio Martinez. <clears throat> These guys come across as soft-spoken gentlemen. And somehow we then confuse that with who they are in the ring. Both guys are lethal punishers, right? Manny Pacquiao is a finisher. It's interesting, though. In some fights, the Margarito fight comes to mind. I got the feeling Manny Pacquiao could have ended it. 
But of course, Manny was there content with doing a Roy Jones impression at the end of that fight and just carrying his guy to a victory. I don't believe Manny Pacquiao can do that in this fight. I believe that the whisper campaign against him, and it's getting substantial, about whether or not Manny Pacquiao is still Manny Pacquiao, the doubts about him make it such that he needs to close the show here. So I'm expecting Manny Pacquiao to win by KO. But let me close with this. You know, a fighter after a devastating KO is always in a strange place because you don't really know what happens if that guy gets hit with another hard shot. I've seen guys who've had granite chins and once that chin gets dented it's never the same. In fact you start to wonder about whether the guy's chin was truly granite or whether the guy was just fortunate enough not to have been hit flush on the chin. Roy Jones comes to mind, right? Roy Jones beats Tarver. In the rematch, Roy Jones gets stopped. It was shocking at the time. Then suddenly it became a habit, right? Roy Jones then gets stopped by Glenn Johnson. Roy Jones then gets stopped by Danny Green. Roy Jones then gets stopped by Dennis Lebedev, right? In sparring, all I'm saying is you're wearing headgear, you're wearing bigger gloves, the guy can look great, but there's a moment of truth. And that moment of truth will come when Rios hits Manny Pacquiao flush. Now, I know Pacquiao had lost in the past when he was a much younger fighter and the first fight, a masterpiece, by El Terrible, Eric Morales, right? Okay, fair enough. But Manny Pacquiao getting stopped in his mid-30s, in my opinion, is different than when you're in your early 20s and you're getting stopped by Tori Albo or whoever stopped him, right? This is qualitatively different. His body is different. The ability of the body to bounce back in your 30s isn't what it was when you were in your early 20s, right? So here, there will be a moment of truth. I do believe you need the hedge and you're getting huge odds on the hedge of Brandon Rios by KO, right? Remember, as great as Manny Pacquiao has been, he's coming off of a devastating knockout loss. And of course, that was in a fight where that was the second time he hit the canvas. And of course, that was after a fight that the judges ruled against him on. And, of course, that came after the last Marquez fight where the crowd at the arena booed the decision. Right? So Manny Pacquiao at this point is in that place where he has to show us he's still himself. Right? If that leads to more aggression, if that leads to him leaving the three-point line and deciding to duke it out under the basket, that's going to play into Brandon Rios' hands. Manny Pacquiao has to fight a disciplined fight. He has to keep the fight at long range, where he has a telescopic lens and Rios doesn't even have a gun, right? That's where he needs to keep it. If this becomes an up close and personal slugfest, then that's bad news, right? Because that, of course, plays into Rios's hands. Think Antillian, think Murray. I believe Manny Pacquiao gets the knockout, but I'm hedging the play. Make no mistake about that. Uh, because, of course, Pacquiao's in his mid-30s, and is coming off of a very bad fight where he was knocked unconscious face first on the canvas for several seconds. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. 
visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.